Hello, I am Micah Kirby. I am the electro etching instructor and also co-teacher of uh, inlay with Chuck Bruce um, at William Holland. Today we're going to go over the process of electro etching. Um, I'm going to use the most basic, the most basic way of electro etching um, that we can do. Um, there are multiple uh, masking processes, which I'll go into, um, but uh, we're going to deal with just one today. Um, so we're going to do a cuff, um, which um, is right here. Either one of these two, this pattern here is what I'm going to be working on. Um, but I also want to emphasize on this, um, I'm choosing this particular uh, project because you can do multiple things. I like to use this as a component, um, as a component-based uh, process where I can take something that I've electro-etched and use it in multiple um, um, pieces. I can do it basically just your straight electro-etched cuff, like right here. Take the same process and make little, little, little bead, kind of beads for earrings. Um, a combination with uh, inlay, some um, cufflinks right here that I've done with some Purple Heart. Um, and then uh, also using etched pieces, so you can see here, piece like this, and use it for a back plate on my, you know, my box pendant here. You can see it's just a, you know, sample of a box pendant, and I used that to etch um, the back back plate. Um, have a just a basic pendant here. I could do just a jump ring, or here. Or what I've done is make a little tube bale on this. But this basic piece was just a ten gauge uh, electro etched silver cut and slightly domed. Um, and then here is a piece of what would be a bale. Um, so the sky is the limit, really, when it comes to what you can do with this process. Um, you can see the two pendants also that are in the, in the picture there. Um, unfinished, of course, but, um, but the multitude of things that you can do. Also, with this process, you can create your own texture plates. And the process that I'll be using today um, will be the exact way you can make your texture plate. So all you have to do then is just use a piece of brass instead of a piece of silver that I'll be using today um, and create a texture plate. I want to show you the materials that are necessary. All the materials are very basic. Uh, well, most of the materials are very basic. Contact paper your regular clear contact paper, drugstore, Lowe's, Walmart, any place that has contact paper. Aluminum foil, you know, you can get that anywhere. Um, if uh, you're scared of your drawing skills, have a template, one of these. I'm gonna demonstrate how I can use this to create um, my pattern. Then these here, Deco Color Markers, are enamel paint pens. These are what we're gonna to use to uh, create our pattern. Um, these are available on Amazon, and I think my website, or my, if you, my email will be um, available through, uh, through this. Um, and if, if, if anyone's interested and can't find them, they're, they're, they should be fairly easy to find on Amazon. Um, they have different tips. You have a fine tip, large tip, and there's a medium tip. Um, so you can uh, have a combination of those. And then Teflon sheet here. Um, I'll explain what this is for later. Also available on Amazon. Uh, then for a, uh, you'll need just like an old gift card. Um, and pair of scissors. Then um, basically 
those are the, the, the basic materials we're going to need. Um, we're going to be using something called cupric nitrate. Um, this, if you are interested in, you can get on Amazon. Um, and if you also, if you, if you get some before uh, classes are going, email me and I can tell you how to mix, mix it up. Um, it comes in a powder form, but um, Amazon has this available. Cupric nitrate is what it's called. Um, this is good for silver. Um, it will etch anything. Um, but the reason I like the cupric nitrate, I typically use this just for my silver because what I can do is reclaim the silver. And if you take my class, I can show you how to do that. Um, we're not going to go through that process today. Um, there is also, um, you can make a salt water solution. That's how I usually do my brass, copper, bronze. You can even do steel if you want to. I don't really use steel, but if you wanted to do steel, you could. Um, but I would use a salt water solution for that because I try to just keep my cupric nitrate just for silver. Um, so those are the basic materials we're going to need. So what we're going to do, I'm going to be using some 16 gauge silver. Um, and I'm going to do what is the, well, first off, we're going to draw on our pattern. Um, and I want to show you the couple of ways I can do that. And then we're going to go into the packaging, what I like to call the packaging. Um, is this example here, where uh, this is what will go into our solution. A thing like this, and I'll explain this once we get there. But I want to start with the, uh, the drawing of whatever pattern um, that you want to use. So some people are scared of their drawing skills. Um, you don't need, you don't need exceptional drawing skills. I try not to do like anything real uh, difficult anyway when I am doing this process. I find a more simple, basic, um, just line. Um, here are some examples here. Um, you know, just very abstract, you know, straight. I come from a drawing background, art, um, I went to art school. Um, so the thing I really love about this process was is a way I could bring in drawing into this, the medium of jewelry, metal. Um, so that, that, that's, that's part of the love that I found with this process for myself. Um, there are a couple of other methods of getting your image on there. Again, we're not going to go really over those today. Um, those require certain machines, but if uh, anyone's familiar with something called a silhouette or a cricket, one of those two items, um, you can create little things like this, where you just do a little decal that you can then use just regular um, images available. This one is a Celtic symbol, tripletra, you know. So um, we're not going to go over this process, but this is just one of the examples. Um, um, the, what we're doing today doesn't require any type of printer or anything like that. So, um, so I showed you my example here. Um, I'm going to be doing, for myself here, um, I'm gonna be doing this little texture pattern here. This is what I'm gonna work on today. But um, to show you that you don't really need any drawing experience, um, I am just going to choose one of these shapes here. Um, do a circle. Take my Deco Color Markers. Again, available on Amazon. I'm gonna use the fine tipped one, um, and they're actually fairly easy to tell which ones are which. Um, they've got little symbols here. You got the tip there, and you can see the tip on this one shows the fine tip. So, um, and then they also have a very, um, like almost an extra large tip. I don't really use that one very often. Um, I do use it, and I can show you where I use that, but um, these two are the basic ones I use for the most part. So, you know, you're worried about your drawing skills. You're like, what do I want to do? Well, um, 
I'll just make a little circle here. Uh, I could fill this whole thing in if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna do some, you know, circles. Uh, I'm gonna wet it, blow it off so it dries a little bit. Um, and you'll notice that I'm just kind of, I'm just winging this. I'm not really, not even really giving much thought to it. Whoops. Blow it off because when I, uh, it will smear if you're not careful. And you can change your sizes, you know, just kind of. Doing that so I don't smear anything. You know, and I can just keep going from here. Um, and you could even mix in if you wanted to. You could even mix in another shape if you want, but I think I'm just gonna stick with the, the little circle pattern here that I'm going with. And basically, I mean, I can just keep going with that, but there's a, you know, just your basic little pattern here. Um, now what I was uh, talking about using the large tip um, that I don't really use that often, but there are times when what I'll do, if you see here, I've just made this black, you know, so I've just taken one of those the large tip um, and covered this whole piece, covered this little part right here. You can take a little scribe and then just make some, you know, I like to make these little uh, very sketchy uh, type of marks here. Um, it's a pattern that I tend to uh, really enjoy. Um, you know, sometimes it's kind of meditative. <laughs> just you know, mess around with it. But um, this will create a slightly different texture. Um, but, you know, so it's basically the same pattern as here. Um, but it does create a different look. Um, also, I have some pieces here of just some hand-drawn pieces. Um, they're the same, they're the same basic same image, but what I've done was one using this process, and then this one using this process. I mean, you can kind of see how they've... Um, these are very whimsical. I mean, you could almost have like, you know, if you wanted to have you know, something uh, that your child made for you. You could, uh, you could have them draw a picture for you or just some real simple, you know, heart with some dots. And it actually, you know, makes a really nice kind of little whimsical type of, you know, this would probably be an earring, could be a pendant, whichever. Um, so you don't need to have a good, you know, you don't have to be scared of your drawing skills here. Um, it's uh, kind of amazing what with, with the people do in class sometimes they surprise themselves so um, those are uh, basically the processes that I use I like to use this drawing process mostly in everything I do um, I can be more original I don't have to use just your everyday you know commercial clip art if, um, um, so and then it's it, uh, I think it makes it a lot more unique pieces. Um, so that's, that's why I like to use this. So from there, um, I'm going to use some 16 gauge silver um, that I just cut into three quarter. You can use whatever width you want. I mean, you can go one inch, you could go two inches. Um, this is just three quarter width, um, 16 gauge silver. Um, and you can use any gauge. Um, if I was going to be um, making a, a piece of sheet where I um, cut my earrings, which I'll, I'll show you, either a pendant or earrings, um, this is 24 gauge, this is 24 gauge. Um, so you can do this in whatever gauge. You just gotta be careful about how, how deep you etch if you've got thinner material. Um, and I'll kind of go into the, the time frame, but for what we're doing today, it's going to be 16 gauge. So I've already started my pattern a little bit here, um, just so I didn't have to draw the whole thing while we are here. Um, what I like to do just to kind of protect my surface 
is use a little piece of cardboard. Um, I take down my little piece of metal. This just keeps it from moving on me while I'm trying to draw my pattern on and tape that down. So like I said, I've already kind of started my pattern here. So I'm just gonna continue with it. Um, I've used the combination of my um, medium tip and that gives me, um, if you can, might be able to see it better on this one, that gives me my little broad lines here. These are the, the thick lines on my broad tip. And then I'll use my fine tip to do these little small lines here. So, um, so use my broad one real here real quick, you know, do a couple little, just little swooshes. You don't have to make the sound effects, or you can if you want. Um, and then take the small one and just do little, and you just I move it around a little bit. And I sometimes like to do little sound effects as I'm doing this. But um, again, uh, like I said, this is, for me, it ends up become uh, a little bit meditative, I guess. I can just sit there and just kind of do this, these little, little swooshes, little zhuzhes, or whatever you want to call them. Really creates a, a really interesting pattern and texture. And again, it's like, I mean, if you can see this, this really has not taken me long at all. Um, I mean, I think this whole process, you know, for me to, to do this whole piece here is probably, you know, less than 15 minutes. So I've got my pattern on there. Um, I want it to dry a little bit, but now I need to, uh, be able to etch it, okay? So this is uh, where a lot of people get messed up in the process. I mean, it, people find this uh, uh, this, process, this part of it a little difficult. Um, it's not, I mean, once you get used to it, it's not that hard, but, um, but it, is, it is one of those things sometimes you kind of have to think about it as you're doing it. So I have to create my packaging. If I were to just try to, um, put this in the solution as it is. One, it wouldn't do anything because we are creating a circuit. Um, and if there's no way to close that circuit, you don't get any power. It won't, it won't etch. Um, there are actually processes that if you put it in a solution, it would etch over a long period of time, but that would take forever. So um, what we wanna do now is create our package. So with this, what I've done is I've cut some of the uh, contact paper, um, and I just, uh, a lot of the contact paper, you know, you have your measurements and stuff on here. I just need it wide enough for uh, my piece here. So this one is actually uh, um, a little wider than I need it. Um, but that's fine. Once I get it all packaged up, I'll, you'll see, I'll just trim it up. Um, that part is not, you don't have to be exact with this part. Um, so you even notice here, you know, my cutting lines are not even, it doesn't matter because this isn't going to be anything. Um, this isn't going to be anything important in the final pro in the final product. It is important in, um, the process of etching, but, um, once you're, yeah, this doesn't make any difference. No one ever going to see this. All right, so I've got my two pieces. The first piece, what I need to do is kind of just find the center of it. I'm just gonna do a little, just a little crease. And um, I'm gonna, I told you that this is three quarters of an inch wide, okay? I need to make a slit here for my piece of aluminum foil. My piece of aluminum foil will act as the, uh, is the connector. Um, this is what my, um, on my rectifier, which I'll, I'll show you when we get there. Um, this is what the, becomes my anode. This is what the, um, the alligator clip for the positive ends up attaching to, all right? 
but we'll get to that. Um, so I need to make a place, a place for that. Um, we need to remember that this is also metal and we are gonna be etching. This solution will etch away any metal. Um, so we need to make sure that this piece is protected because if uh, any of the solution gets back onto this piece, it will stop the etching process. So, and, and that's basically what this packaging will do. It protects this piece and it also protects the areas of your, um, this, in this case, the piece of silver, the piece that we're etching. It will protect the areas that we don't want etched. So everything that's exposed, will, metal will be etched away. Um, everything that's covered won't be. So, um, so I've got this three quarters of an inch wide. I need to make a space, a place for my aluminum to go through. Um, I need to make a little slit here. Now, I don't want this cut to be real big. Um, I don't want it to come outside. I'll show you. I don't want it to come outside the, the perimeter of my piece here. So a good rule of thumb, I usually, I try to make my slit maybe uh, a third, one third of whatever the width of my material is. This being three quarters, um, I wouldn't make my slit more than a quarter of an inch. So it's a good rule of thumb there. So then you've got a quarter of an inch on each side there to uh, protect your little piece of aluminum foil here. So, uh, and I don't measure it, I, I just eye it. So, you know, make my little slit. So, and yeah, that that is about as wide as I want to go. And you can kind of even, you know, if you're worried about it, you can always kind of like look at it, you know, put it up to it and be like, okay, that's that works. Um, so, now, um, all I did was cut me a, cup, a strip of aluminum foil, you know. Um, now, of course, uh, if we look here, this is a little wide. It's a little wide for the slip that I've got here. Not a big deal. I can just make it fit. Just cut a little bit off. Again, this does not have to be pretty either. Uh, we just need it to, we just need it to fit through that little slot. Slit, slot, whichever you want to call it. Now, I find the easy way to do that. Um, and real quick, um, if everyone is familiar with contact paper, we know one side is, you know, not sticky. Uh, the paper side here is the sticky side. The sticky side is what, um, is what our piece will attach to. Uh, it won't attach to the non-sticky side. It seems obvious, um, but sometimes that does mess people up. Um, so I'm just starting, and actually as I'm doing this, it needs to, I need to thin it out just a little more. This part does not have to be pretty. Just get rid of those little pieces. And I've just made it a little thinner, narrower, we'll say. And yeah, so that should fit. And I'm just kind of pushing it through. And you don't need a whole lot. So once, you know, people ask me, um, you know, like, well, how much of a piece do we need, you know, out here? Um, basically, this just needs to make good contact to the back, to the back side of our um, piece that we're etching. You don't need a whole lot. Um, this, what, I mean, a little over a half inch here, um, is more than enough. So um, you could actually have it you know, quarter of an inch, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, so just as long as you have good contact is the important part here. So got my little slip here. I know this side is my sticky side. Um, and uh, I want my tab to come out on that sticky side, all right? Because this needs to make contact with our piece. So I'm just gonna lay this down once I've got that through. I'm just gonna lay this out. Um, I like to control where my 
I like my tab to be straight. I'm a little anal that way, um, or a OCD that way. Um, so now I just need to get the sticky exposed. Uh, what I do want to be careful here, you uh, want to be careful just pulling this off because if I just pull it off and this gets caught, it will rip it. Now, of course, this piece, we've got a nice long piece here, but um, you know, it will shorten my little uh, uh, connector. So what I like to do here is I'm just pulling it up, but when I get kind of where this tab is, I'm just gonna rip, I'm just gonna tear that, that way, and that way, and like that, and then it doesn't even create an issue. I do that, um, people say I make that look easy. I feel like it is pretty easy, but sometimes people have a problem with it. So I just tap, you know, just put that down. So now that's kind of stuck in place. So my sticky side is exposed. So this is where we're at. And then this is my piece of aluminum foil. Um, people will have a tendency of wanting to use this as a handle don't because if you rip it then they're gonna have to repackage it you're gonna have to do this process over cut more pieces and not that it takes real long but then it's just kind of a waste of time sometimes so this is trash so then i'm gonna i want to avoid air bubbles if i can um actually let's do this and turn that that way and this is where the teflon she comes into play here. Um, it's great because the contact paper won't really, it, it will stick to this, but it won't stick to your, uh, your, your surface, which then if you were to try to do this on just a table, you're gonna have a pain of trying to get this up and we'll see why. So um, I'm going to lay this down. I try to just get this um, area where can we see here? That one a little bit. I just try to get that centered. All right. Um, now I haven't I haven't pushed this down yet. It's just kind of loosely laid down here. But um, this is the tab here. Um, that is what I want to make good contact with my um, with my piece. So I'm just gonna take my gift card, old gift card, and we're just gonna, uh, you just wanna make sure to keep those air bubbles out. So that's all I'm really doing here. Go down. So, you know, I've got good contact here. I can tell that it's nice and adhered. Um, and so from this part here, you know, if you were to try to take this and just put it into your solution, your, uh, your back piece here is exposed, your piece of foil here. Um, if you were to just put that in, your foil would etch away. Um, you'd lose contact and the etching process would just stop. So we need to protect this little piece. So I've got a second piece of contact paper, pretty much the exact same size, um, that then I will put on the back here. Again, I want to avoid air bubbles. Throw those away in a second. Um, now, Again, this doesn't have to be right exact either. Um, I just need to make sure I keep my aluminum foil portion here covered. And that's basically what this piece is doing, is just making sure to uh, protect our little foil piece. Um, so I'm just gonna set that there. You know, get it started. I'm gonna hold it up because I wanna make sure I try to keep my air bubbles out. And so I'm going to take my card. Where's my? There we go. Maybe nice. I'm just kind of holding it up with my, you know, with my finger here. 
Um, you know, it's, it is kind of touching here a little bit, but you know, it hasn't, I haven't fully pressed it down. So I can still, if there's like any air bubbles, you might be able to hear them maybe if I... Now, if I were to have like an air bubble like here or something, or some random air bubble here, it's not a huge issue. Um, the only time that there would be an issue is if you had like a little crease coming from your edge into the middle here. That would be the only time that that would, that that, that could be an issue because that could create a little path for your solution to get into. Um, if you don't have that, then it's, it's not anything to, to really worry about if you do get a little air, random air bubble in here somewhere. All right, so, all right, so basically got the package there. Um, now we need to get it off the Teflon. Now the nice thing about this, I like to flip it over and you, know, you can kind of give it a little, little push here. Just make sure you get a nice good adhesion onto that backside because we don't want the backside to get etched. And this is the beautiful thing about this stuff. It keeps it from being a pain of like, if you were to ever, like I said, if you try to do this on your surface, it would be a pain to get this off. Um, so basically this is where we're at with the packaging. Now again, I hesitate from using this as a handle. This is a little wide. You know, it might fit into my container. Which, uh, we can see here. It might fit in there. Um, I'm gonna cut it first. Um, but I'm just gonna trim up these edges here just to make it fit in a little, a little easier. So there is waste in this process. And again, this part doesn't have to be pretty either. Um, now I do like to keep a, a you know, a, you know, at least an inch of material around um, that's not a uh, it's not a huge deal if it's not uh, the only thing that can happen um, uh, is you know you don't you really want to keep my solution from like seeping in uh, any areas and so if I have uh, a little bit around the outside it, it seems to help keep that from happening I do see, actually, I do see maybe a couple of air bubbles here. Yep, if you can, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I do have a couple of air bubbles. I'm not gonna worry about them because they, they won't, they're not gonna cause any problem for me. So I'm just gonna, I'll just leave them there. I'm not even gonna mess with them. I'm gonna cut a little bit off the end. And this is basically the, uh, I would say, for myself, sometimes this is the hardest process. This is the hardest part of this process um, because sometimes people get it reversed or they, they, they want to not put it on the sticky side or something. But um, So from here, um, we are now ready to etch. Um, so I'm going to take this over here. So again, I explained that the Kubrick nitrate is available at Amazon. Um, if you email me, I could always let you know how to do the mixing of it. And then I have these copper plates, this copper plate, a large one here for this particular process, but you can have small ones also. Um, I just made these myself, 24 gauge copper. Um, with the 24 gauge copper, then I cut off of like a strip here. Like that. Um, and then I just used wire, um, copper wire, and created my little rivets here to create my tad here to you know hold the things up um, again this does not have to be pretty um, we just need a you know I mean really you could use just about any piece of copper you wanted I mean you wouldn't even necessarily have to make a tab like this you could take just your sheet um, a long enough sheet fold it over and you just have a, a full sheet there just as long as you have something to clip to um, you can use, use, use any sheet you want. So, 
to give you some terminology, this would be my cathode. This is your negative, all right? So this is what your black is going to attach to. Um, this is a rectifier. Um, the nice thing about the rectifier is you can adjust your uh, amperage. Um, the another way here is just a a uh, an AC DC um, uh, what, uh, can't remember what they call these. Um, not a transformer, but a uh, converter. Basically, it's like in your your old uh, you know battery charger type of thing. Um, you can get these on Amazon, and it's got a little lead connector here that you can just get little leads, connect that, um, and it just creates a, you know, takes your AC DC current to um, or yeah an AC current and changes it to direct current. Um, these, maybe maybe five bucks. Uh, you can also use D-cell batteries. Um, the only thing about these um, is the amperage that it uses, because the amperage is what's important, and I'll kind of go into that when you can see that you can see the numbers on the uh, rectifier. Um, the, uh, you just, you can't control the amount. It's got the amperage that it has, and these are all, you know, it says on them, this is a, this one is amps, is one amp, six volts, one amp, right? And you won't need any more than one amp. Um, the idea here, um, the more amps that you have, the faster the edge. Now, what happens when you have more amperage, you can get a rougher edge. So, good rule of thumb here is low and slow. It's kind of like with your barbecue. Um, so when I set this up here, um, when I initially get my rectifier, if you intend on purchasing one of these, um, plug it in, hook it up, turn it on. Um, I like to use less than one amp. All right, so how do I set that up? Um, your top here is voltage which I never really pay attention to because the voltage isn't really important in this process. Um, your bottom here is the amperage. Um, that is what's important. So the way I set that up, I would take my two ends and just touch them together. And so we can see we got some numbers here. All right, um, I can turn the knob up, 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 and that would be, you know, 1.01 amp. Um, I don't need, I don't need that much amperage. Um, I mean, I could do it that way, but it, it, it you know, it, like I said, low and slow is the way to go. So I'm going to back it down, and it's real easy here. Um, just kind of tap it back. Is that, is that a seven? Okay. From here, from here, it looks like a one. Um, and I'm just gonna go 0 0.8, 0 0.8 amps, all right? It's plenty, plenty there. Yeah, I mean, you could go, you could go 0 0.9. Um, um, really, it doesn't really matter, I think, at that point. As long as it's under one amp, I think you're gonna get a nice, smoother etch. So, I've got my amperage set just by doing that. So, I know here, that's what my amperage should be at. Um, so now I'm ready to hook up. So I'll take the negative, the negative, the black, goes to the copper, the copper plate. Um, was also called the uh, cathode. Then the piece itself, the piece that I'm etching, is my positive, the red. And I'm gonna put that in the solution. And I'm gonna put it all the way down just so it covers the top. I just want my whole piece submerged. All right, fold that over. And I'm gonna connect the positive. Um, 
It doesn't matter which one you connect first, honestly. Um, you can, if you wanted to, it doesn't matter. You could connect your positive first, then your, your then your um, black. Um, it doesn't really matter. So, disconnected, you heard that little click. It's a good sign. It lets me know, it should be at the eight amps. We are now etching. What I like to do here um, is set a timer. Now, I've already done, um, you know, doing this enough. Uh, if I'm doing something small, I might set an eight minute timer, just a good roundabout time. Um, for this particular piece, the more surface area you're trying to etch, the longer it takes to etch. The smaller the surface area, the less time it takes. So um, I don't ever try to, you know, there are calculations you could do to figure out your surface area and da 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 da. I don't even mess with that. Um, for this, um, I'll set a timer for 20 minutes, come back and check it. I'm just from my experience, I know a piece like this probably gonna take about 30. 30, maybe 40 minutes, depending. Um, so, but I'll set my timer and I'll come back and check it. So, from there, once that, that goes, um, I will end up with what looks like this. Um, after I've let it go for my 20, 30 minutes, dental tool. Um, I'll just take a dental tool and you can get it. Um, Harbor Freight had them, or if you, you know, um, there might be other places you can get dental tools from, but Harbor Freight's good, good and cheap. You don't need anything expensive for this. I just use these to kind of test my depth. So I'll kind of go in with the, the dental tool and I can feel, and you can see, I've got a little, I've got uh, uh, where it kind of grabs. You know, so I can feel that there is, um, I don't know, I'm not sure what the millimeter, I mean, this would be less than a millimeter in depth, but, um, but I can tell that it's, it's a nice deep etch. Um, and so that's how I would test my, my depth here would be with that. Um, real quick on the solution itself. Um, I said that for this particular piece, it's 30, exactly 38 minutes is what I did for this piece. Um, you have the solution here. The solution um, will, if you can see, this one's kind of cloudy because um, I've already etched this piece. Um, you can do multiple etchings. The solution will get saturated um, and you'll need to filter it. So um, the easiest way to do that is take a coffee filter and a funnel. I would just pour my solution through the coffee filter into my other container and let that filter. That is the easiest way to clean the solution. And that'll work for a couple of times. Um, after you've done maybe two, three etchings, um, you would need to get a vacuum pump, but we're not gonna go all into that process. Um, if anybody's interested in that, you can you know, take a class or you can email me um, um, if you have any questions on, on that part of the process. Um, the nice thing about the cupric nitrate, as long as it is filtered and cleaned after, you know, after your, you know, couple of uses, um, if you know you're not going to be using it, filter it, put it into a container. I like to use old... Um, windshield wiper, nice thick plastic one. I mean, that's a good travel stuff. So this way I know it's better than just a gallon jug uh, like your milk jug. Um, that's what I would use to, um, to store my solution. But I would filter my solution, put it in here, and it'll be good for, it, it'll be good forever, as long as you just keep cleaning the solution. Um, and then from that, you'll have your silver gunk that is produced um, in your coffee filter. 
keep that coffee filter, you can reclaim that silver. Um, you know, you can, I just kind of collect a whole, I've got a whole bag of it, uh, filters with the silver in it. Um, when I get enough, I'll probably just have it sent out and have it refined for me. You can do it yourself. Um, if you want to take the time to do that, I'll probably just have mine sent out. Um, and then you can reuse that silver. So that's the nice thing about this. Uh, you can reclaim that silver. Um, and you can, you know, thing I love about it is get a nice unique piece. Um, so from here, I would need to clean it off. Okay, so we're back. Um, so we've got it etched. I need to clean this off. Um, acetone won't take off this enamel paint pen. Only thing that's gonna work is mineral spirits. Um, it doesn't have to be this particular brand, you just need mineral spirits to do it. So, um, take off that. Get rid of all the, what ends up that uh, technical term for what the pin is, is a resist. So we're gonna take off a resist. So here's what we've got so far. Um, I'll go ahead and take this off. So, and also, um, I'll clean this off. I'm just gonna use a little bit of Dawn. I actually will probably use my uh, brass brush. You don't have to use a brass brush, um, but I think it will show you better of what you uh, end up with. Um, clean it off. A little brass brush here. it off a little bit and so this is what we've ended up with so again nice you know real simple real simple pattern um, I think it creates a really cool effect um, and it doesn't it doesn't take much uh, drawing skills to uh, to be able to do that so from here, what I would do um, to create my cuff, I would you know I need to clean up my need to clean up my edges, take off my corners, um, and then form that. So then from there, we'll just go ahead and walk. Mm -hmm. um, and in that process of walking, magically it appears this is what you end up with. Um, so after I clean up my edges and my corners, then this is. Um, and tumble it. I like to tumble it. Now, um, from here also, you could um, patina. Um, so then um, it really makes a nice uh, effect if you get like the nice dark shadows um, in your low points. Um, you polish the high points. Yes, perfect example. Um, so this is kind of what you get here especially, is, is that effect. Um, and so this, uh, the, one of the reasons I really chose this as a demo today is you take a larger piece and like this, and then you can cut out. I'll show you, uh, I'm gonna cut out another little piece, but uh, start with some pendants or earrings. Um, this is where I was talking about doing this as a component-based kind of process. So we'll go over here to the cutter. Um, like I said, uh, from, from what we've done, I can just cut myself uh, a disc. Well, multiple discs. So like I said, um, from here, you know, I'm just gonna create my last little piece here. You know, dome that. I like to use um, in this if uh, if I'm doming. 
If I use a metal one, a metal uh, dapping set, I want to put a piece of leather in here because it'll mar up my uh, my texture, my pattern. So um, in this, I'll just use a wooden one. And real simple. I like to do this over the supported part of my desk, anvil, or you know some other real support. There we go. Nice domed little piece that will make my third little part for my pendant here. Go over here. Uh, might have to clean up the edges sometimes. Um, because, uh, you know, after the disc cutter, of course, you can kind of, but this one actually feels good. Um, but I've already got another piece here, and I would take my, uh, 1.8 punch, and make myself a little, this little hole. Um, sometimes you get a burr on the outside, but I want to clean that up. This one seems okay. Take a jump ring. And this is basically, you know, you know, cold connection or yourself a jump ring or a simple bale. You can make your own bale. Um, this process, I just used a commercial bale. Um, but if I was doing this for myself, um, I might use, uh, I might make my own bale for it. Um, where was that piece? So I could, you know, take what I did here, use my bale pliers, form this, soldering, add the jump ring, da 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 da, all that stuff then create my bale, my handmade bale for my, for my pendant. Um, there's that. And so like we see with, with the, some of these finished pieces here, um, this is why I really like this piece, uh, this process. I can do all kinds of different things with this process. I can use different patterns. I can create my texture plates. Um, you notice this is a different pattern here. Um, I just did up a whole sheet. I can go through just like we did, cut out myself whatever size discs that I need. Let me move this stuff so you can see. Um, you know, really, the, the, the sky is the limit, really, when it comes to, I, uh, with this process and how you can use it. So, um, yeah, I guess that's kind of uh, where we're at. That's where we're at with the process. Um, yeah, like I said, you can email me if you have any other questions. And uh, I guess for now, that's, uh, that's a wrap.